Lately, there have been more and more luxury SUVs hitting the marketplace. This is the 2020 Lincoln Navigator, but this is the black label. It is nothing but the best, and we're going to take it for a drive. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix. We do a lot more than just car reviews. First look and giving you information so you can have car smarts because we believe knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss anything. This is the 2020 Lincoln Navigator Black Label. Nothing but the best, nothing but all the ultimate accessories you would want. Now you might think, Who's going to want a vehicle like this? Well, you'd be surprised. Besides the Cadillac Escalade, you've got Mercedes, you've got Land Rover, and quite a few other competitors in this segment. And so if you're going to win in this segment, you better bring something better than what the competition has, something very unique. And Lincoln Navigator has done this. They were North American Truck of the Year when the new Navigator came out, and that was in 2019. And since then, they've elevated the brand with a monochrome lineup. And this is a beautiful car black label, nothing but the best in service. So we're going to give you a review on information that you're not going to get at the dealer. The dealer's going to try and sell you on the vehicle because that's their job. We're going to give you information on performance, safety, handling, visibility, seating comfort, technology, features, quality, design, and value. And in the end, we'll give you a car coach reports total so that you can compare this vehicle to all of its competitors. Down below in the description will be a list of all the competitors and we have reviewed all of them. So we make sure to check that out before you make your final decision because like we keep saying, knowledge is power. Let's go for a ride. As we drive along the regular roads, this 3.5 liter V6 engine is twin turbocharge. So that gives you 450 horsepower, 500 pound feet of torque, and that is a lot. I mean, you're thinking about that, but you need it to push this engine along and having turbochargers really does help the fuel economy as well. Fuel economy ranges 16 miles to gallon city, 22 on the highway. The towing capacity of this vehicle is 6,200 pounds and there are trailer brakes and a class four hitch built in and that's really important. The Lincoln Navigator comes real wheel drive or all wheel drive and our particular black reserve model that we have here today is all wheel drive, so it's great for all conditions anywhere in the country. Remember when you're comparing this Lincoln Navigator to a Cadillac Escalade, a Lexus LX570, which we reviewed that as well, the Mercedes GLS, there's a lot of vehicles in this category, and then you can get even more expensive, or you can decide, well, I really don't need this much luxury, and I'd like to maybe step down to an Expedition or Yukon Denali, where you can definitely get a lot of these same luxurious features without having to go to the premium line, and then some of us would love to have all the premium stuff. Remember, there are prices to negotiate in these categories, so don't think that because the starting price seems so high doesn't mean that they don't have them packaged and sitting on the show floor, and they would love to negotiate a price with you. Zero to 60 in the Excite mode is pretty darn good. Woo, serious power. And then there's also, whoa, power. Big brakes on this vehicle. And when it comes to performance, remember it's not just go, it's whoa power, it earns a nine. Handling a big beast like this Navigator is something that you would think is really hard to do, but the fact is they've done a great job with the design of the suspension of this vehicle. It absorbs a lot of the bumps, and I'm on New York State roads, so believe me, they're not so great as you can see. Sometimes they're smooth and sometimes they're not so smooth. But what you are getting is a vehicle that is absorbing the ride, even in the Excite mode, where you're not getting an aggressive ride. And that is something you probably want in a vehicle this size because you got people in back and they don't want to be riding on a rough road or feeling like they're in the back of a log wagon. Well, you're not getting that at all in the Navigator nor other vehicles in this class. But what you are gaining is a vehicle that stops well, that handles well, and doesn't feel nearly as big as you would think. Our vehicle rides on 22 inch wheels, but there's also 20 inch wheels on the regular Navigator. Let's check out the turning radius of this vehicle as we go down this empty road and let's see how it turns around. Let's see. Easy to do a three point turn, put it in reverse. Really easy to see where you're going as well. Handling really is impressive on this Navigator. When you compare it to other vehicles in the category, it earns a nine. 
Standard safety for the Black Reserve is really impressive. It has the Lincoln Copilot 360. It allows it to stay in the road when you're on the highway. You hit the appropriate buttons. Again, you want to check your owner's manual and make sure to follow those specifically. And this vehicle will keep you within the lines. This is not an autonomous driving vehicle. There are none available on the road as of 2020. Anyone who says they're fully autonomous is not telling you the truth, so it's important that you do your homework. But what you are getting is pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking. If somebody stops in front of you, they hit the brake short, this vehicle will stop. And believe me, it needs to stop. There's a lot of weight in this vehicle and you want to stop it and it does a great job with that. It has cross traffic alert, a round view camera, and all the safety features that you can imagine. Well designed and well packaged and that's why the reserve includes its standard when you purchase this vehicle and it should for this price point. I'm really impressed with all the safety features and what's thought out for you as the consumer, for other people around you. It's about being safe on the road and safety is a top priority with every brand. Trust me on that. And in this case, for the Navigator, it earns a 10. Visibility is really important on a vehicle of this size. Out the front, you've got a good size windshield and you certainly have command of the road. And if that's what you're looking for, this is certainly one of those vehicles. The sills are nice and low, so whether you're sitting in any row, you can actually see out the window and it's certainly not too high to put your arm on the armrest. Looking out the back, the only limitation is if no one's sitting in the third row, I would highly recommend folding down those headrests because it does block the visibility. However, if you choose not to and you've got people in the third row, that around view camera makes a huge difference. One thing that I wish this Lincoln Navigator had was when you flip the rear view mirror, you would get a backup camera. But in this case, it doesn't offer that. Cadillac has it, other brands have that. And when you're talking about visibility as a whole, it earns a nine. Like I'm constantly saying in all of my reviews, is seating is a top priority. No matter what you're driving, this position and this position need to be important because you do switch drivers at times on long road trips. But for me, I think that it's really important that the driver's seat is a comfortable place for you to sit, starting with adjustable height seat belts. That is pretty much standard on this lineup, and yes, it is here. When you're looking at the seating itself, super impressive. 30 way, yes I said it, 30 way adjustable seating. The adjustments for the seats are on the door, which is also very much something you'd see in a Mercedes lineup. Multiple adjustments, three way memory seating, and a button easy to press for massaging. You may or may not like massaging seats. I'm curious what you think, put that on the comments below. Personally, I love massaging seats for long road trips. I do a lot of 15 hour road trips and why not be comfortable? Why not at least keep yourself awake? These are things that you can or cannot use. My husband despises it. I'm curious what your opinion is. One thing that's important that all the competition has is that the driver and passenger seat both have 30 way adjustable seats. And that's important because you want to be comfortable. Whoever's riding with you would like to be comfortable. And the fact that you can adjust the massaging seats, by the way, in 10 different categories and 10 different intensity levels. I love it. I just think this makes driving a pleasure especially if you got kids in the car you need to de-stress you need to bring it down as lincoln likes to say it's all about being calm in the car it's the experience of being calm and they have a calm app that they work with it's really about making you feel luxurious and comfortable on your drive and still getting you to where you want to be now let's take a look at the second and third rows Easy access to the second row also allows you to see the cool design of these first row seats. This is not something you see in every vehicle. They've really thought about the seating comfort for all the passengers. In the second row, we've got nice wide armrests, which I wish every manufacturer would do because when you're putting your arm here, we're all built differently. You want to have something of some size ability to put your arm on, but not so big that it takes up all this space. These also go up and down. So again, well thought out, nice pockets in front. You can get entertainment screens if you want. And you've got your beautiful Revel audio system back here as well. Window lift storage in the doors. Really, really comfortable here in the second row. And it's all power if you need to get back to the third row. In addition, the comfort of the second row passengers is very important. So you've got your adjustment for volume, your media, your clock. Plus you've got heated rear seats and automatic climate control. In addition, across the back, you've got two USB connections, a regular wall outlet, and your regular connection, and two cup holders that tuck up and hide underneath the center console. 
Back in the third row, I'm 5'8", and there is really surprisingly plenty of headroom. Now, I'm more legs than I am torso, and I have plenty of knee room and shoulder room. This is a very luxurious, very wide, inviting cabin. So if you've got seven adults, there's plenty of room. In addition to that, you've got your center seating, and you've got the ability to put the seat in front of you forward or back. In addition, you can adjust the seats in the front or back by moving them and reclining them or moving them forward. So you may not be able to see this, but the seats actually recline, which is really, really good for a child's safety seats because trying to get them to attach to the latch system, which there is back here, sometimes it requires you to crawl around and make it work and the seat's not pushed forward. Well, this has been thought of and they put that in. In addition, there's USB outlets to charge on each side. There's two cup holders on the left, one on the right and plenty of storage for snacks or whatever it is you're bringing, your emergency kit components, whatever that is. The third row also offers two vents as well as separate lighting. But when it comes to seating overall in this gigantic, comfortable vehicle, you can't expect it to have anything less than a 10. Technology on a vehicle like this is so important. With this gigantic center screen, you would expect it to have all of the things that you would need. It's a bit on the basic side. It takes a little bit long to load. As you can see, it's just taking a bit longer than I would like. It does function quickly, but you're watching it load the map and it seems to be taking just a bit longer than I would like. And compared to some of the competition, some move really quickly like the Mercedes, but then the Cadillac is pretty much equivalent to this. Now, when you're looking at this center screen and how it functions, you can see that there's some pretty simple controls. You've got your audio, your climate, your phone, your navigation, your apps, and your settings. Starting with apps, some of these mobile apps you can put in yourself. That includes, of course, the concierge and your travel link. When you're looking at the navigation screen, it's a bit dated. I'm surprised that when you look at some of the Germans and what they're offering, that they haven't come around to putting some sort of natural Google Maps or something that's easier to read. This is easy to read. It's just a bit on the dated side. And when you're talking about technologies, this is something that people want to get used to. Go back to the home button. If you've used the Sync 3 system before, you're very comfortable with it. You have your phone, your climate control, which allows you to adjust your temperature and all your settings. And then on top of that, you can go to your menu button, which has your max air and your AC. I find that a bit obscure. One of the things, if you hit the button on the door, this is part of technologies, is you can see the different massage settings. Beyond that, you can adjust the different settings in 10 different areas. So whether you want the upper back, the lower back, the very lower back, your sides or the bottom cushions, you have all of these different adjustments for the driver and the passenger. And then of course you can pick the massaging, whether you want them off, low or high. And this, of course, is the sides and the bottom. So you pick what works for you. Climate control isn't just on the screen. Some people like to do it that way, but it allows you that option. And then you go to your audio system. This is the Revel audio system. The Revel audio system has everything you would need. Choose your stations and what you're looking for. And again, we'll go into this a little bit deeper on what's available in the features section. But when it comes to technology and the speed of that technology, you also want to take a look at some of the functions that you would want to use. One of my favorites, this is part of handling, is this wonderful detailed video that goes with each adjustment that you would set the vehicle to. And I think this is really cool and well designed and it moves quickly and the car also adjusts quickly. That is part of technology and for technology, it earns a nine. Looking at the features of the Lincoln Navigator, you've got your standard steering wheel controls of volume and changing the station, your standard cruise control. Of course, this is not standard on this vehicle. This has the Ford collision warning and everything built in. But one of the things this vehicle has, I think is really cool, is the button you can press for navigation. This is the head up display, but it's also music and your phone. And of course, this allows you to speak what you are looking for to the commands. So it gives you some options. And of course, you'll go through all that if you purchase this vehicle. And that's what a salesman's gonna try and sell you on is all these lovely goodies. Now we did talk about this in handling and the different drive modes. So this is part of the features as far as I'm concerned, the Excite, the responsive and engaging version. I love these videos. Whoever came up with these had a great time. And then you go over to conserve, of course, being a fuel efficient driver. 
There are times that make sense. Normal driving mode, effortless and balance is really what the Lincoln is all about. Going to the normal 4x4 Auto, confident and secure, great for winter. And then you go into those slippery days of the fall. It's cold here, slick, icy, and loose surfaces. Of course, I love the snow. And then you've got the deep conditions, which would be deep snow or mud assist. And then the slow climb that is 4x4 low. You would shift to neutral, and then it would go ahead and do that adjustment for you. But the fact is that you can see these different changes and I think this is what people want to know is, they, is how they feel when they're driving, whether they want to conserve or they want an exciting type of drive experience, a spirited drive, which also brings in the tachometer. I love the digital gauges. I just worry what's going to happen when these vehicles are 20 years old and there's a problem, how much that's going to cost to repair. But that's true on every single vehicle in this category and pretty much every new car today. Looking at your shift levers, you've got your controls for your wiper blades both front and rear and then over here you've got your lane departure warning your headlights and your turn signals in addition to one of the impressive features that is available on the lincoln is the ability to bring the pedals closer or farther away i have a couple of friends who are 410 and one of their biggest problems is they can't reach the pedals well if you have this the pedals will come to you and they just adjust accordingly very nice this is for your trunk, your lighting, and so forth. And then we go over to the seating, which we did discuss in seating. But this allows you to pick your memory, your adjustments for seating, which is quite a bit of adjustments, your massaging seats. And then, of course, you can pick up or down where you want that to be. And I think they've really thought a lot about moving these different parts of the seat. And the front seat is a split seat as well. Moving across to the center of the vehicle, which in this case is on the left side, is your trailer backup. Now, when you press this, this will give you the ability to look out the back. You press the camera, and suddenly you've got a camera that will give you a lot of adjustments on what you're looking for. This is good if you're towing a trailer. And one of the things when you're towing a trailer is you need to have trailer brakes. This is the trailer brakes. The trailer is disconnected. It's telling me right now, but if you press this you can adjust the trailer brakes intensity this is a class 4 hitch and receiver and I think this is something if you are towing a boat a camper whatever that might be this is something that you want to know about this is one thing that I'm not sure I like or dislike I'm starting to see this a lot I do love the vents by the way nice and clean everything is real but this is the old shift lever park reverse neutral drive I'm not sure I like it here. It's nice and clean and it gives a lot of other positives. But in this particular car, it's not so much in your face versus the Escalade. You can check out our review up there because that's going to show the difference in where their stuff is located. One of the things I like about doing this is you can see the pass through. You see the gap between the shifter lever and the center console. Isn't that cool? And then in addition, you get underneath, which allows you tons and tons of storage so that you can put all your junk in here because that's what we do. And this is really neat because then you go back to the center where you have you have all of your adjustments, including the ventilated seats, the heated seats, the dual climate control, and best of all, a real volume button and a real tuning button, which I do appreciate. There is no CD player, but you can see some of the features right here. Going further back, you've got a great place for putting your phone, two cup holders, and then underneath this door there is a place to charge your phone. There's also USB and USB-C connections and a light, as well as a place to charge in case you don't have wireless charging. It's a great place to hide your phone so you're not distracted while you're driving. Further back on the center console, you've got your parking brake, my favorite, to shut off the auto off, which I say saves maybe a tablespoon of fuel. Your park assist, your parking for steering for your perpendicular parallel park which is really great if you've got a vehicle this size and you're not comfortable with it your auto hold this is your drive mode we just looked at all the different drives one of the things I think is kind of weird is when you're looking at the center console and you think oh there's two armrests isn't that great well when you open it it's the whole armrest I don't know if you can see that it's kind of unusual I'm not sure what the thought process on this is but then when you look in here you're thinking oh this is great plenty of storage yes it is a deep well storage with this velveted drawer but there's only one outlet and that is for a regular 12 volt outlet and a spot for your pen whatever else you want to put in there 
Additionally, some of the neat technologies and features that are available in this beautiful vehicle is really pretty. And I do love the gigantic panoramic sunroof. Just the design and the colors are just so well thought out. It also has phone is my key. The phone can be your key, so you don't have to carry the key with you every single day. And I think people appreciate that because if you leave the house and you forget your phone, which doesn't happen too often, it's certainly something that you'll be thrilled that you have your phone with you, especially if you need to let someone in the vehicle. In addition, for those passengers that like luxury, you of course have Wi-Fi. When it comes to all the features in this vehicle, and there are quite a few and well thought out features, it earns a nine. On the design of the Navigator, they've really tried to make it very luxurious and exquisite. Part of that is this front elevation look. Now this beautiful grille is aluminum in color. I do like the fact they offer the illuminated Lincoln logo and it's not too much in your face like you see with the Mercedes. There are lines up the hood make it very aerodynamic looking and they've really tried to make it very stylized. LED lighting and then down below is this nice big shiny lower grill. This grill is functional. It's not just there for look. So you can see it is a complete great. Besides the LED lighting and the daytime running lights, you have lower driving lights and there are cameras that are hidden very nicely in the grill. They're not blatantly obvious. Along the side of the Navigator, you've got 22 inch alloy wheels running on hand cooked tires. This is about luxury. This is not about performance. This is a really good all season tire. Again, if you're going into those northern parts of this country, you're probably going to want to get some snow tires, even though it has all wheel drive, if you want the best traction. Big Navigator logo here, well designed, nicely integrated, which I think is not in your face and also makes it stand out so people know what you're driving. Big mirrors really helps with visibility and the blind spot detection has the notification in the mirror. One thing I do like from a design standpoint is it does have this embrace part of the black label package. That's part of their design features along with the Copilot 360. We'll talk about that in safety. But in addition, when you open the door, you've got the running boards. This just makes it easier to get in, especially if you're wearing heels or dress shoes or whatever it is you're wearing. It just makes it a little easier. They tuck right up also, which is also quite helpful. Going further back, I do like the fact that they've always kept that Ford little bit. You may or may not like it, but I do. This is the numbers for the keyless entry. So instead of you running your hands here, you can do that. You can also put a security code in here in case someone needs to access the vehicle. There are a lot of ways to access the vehicle as well as through your phone. Now going further back, nice clean lines, big windows, gives good visibility for the second and the third row. Clean lines as we work our way around to the back. Across the back of the Lincoln Navigator, this wiper blade is the one thing I'm going to hit them on. It's sort of in the way, and although they have a protective covering on it, really where it should be is tucked up underneath, just like the General Motors has done with their Cadillac lineup. They've tucked them right up there, and I think that's something that Lincoln should consider because it really makes it easier for not just the wiper blade's life, but also so it's not in your face. It makes it cleaner. Big Lincoln spelled out widely spaced across the back. Just a little bit much. I guess you're trying to fill in this gap. I love the lighting across the back. Also LED, lots of cameras. This one, you can see the camera. There's also a camera up here. There's a camera across the back. This is for towing. It's also for part of your round view camera. And then you've got all the rest of these components here. This vehicle does have a towing package built into it and they like to keep it nice and clean. When you're looking at the overall package with the LED taillights and how everything has been designed for design, it earns a nine. The quality of the Lincoln Navigator is quite impressive. Not just the exterior panels and the gap in the paint quality, but we're also talking about the materials inside the vehicle. Hand stitched, nice soft leather components. Everything works as it's planned and everything is real. You're not touching something and knowing that it's plastic. And when you're buying a Lincoln Navigator that starts at $99,000 for a black label, it better perform and it does that because the competition also does that. When you're looking at the vehicle overall, plus the warranty, and its longevity and resale value. For quality, it earns a 10. Going around to the back of the Lincoln Navigator, there's quite a bit of storage options, about 20 cubic feet of storage. Now, one of the things that I like is the ability to push this up. You've got storage underneath that's hidden. And then in addition, you've got more storage that can be hidden underneath here. 20 cubic feet of storage is quite a bit, but let's say you wanna put down that second row seating. Well, it's as simple as pressing a button, When you put down the third row, you have 57 cubic feet of storage. That's a lot. 
And then if you want to put that third row down, maybe you're taking home a big screen TV, a bunch of stuff, moving your kid into college, whatever it might be, just hit that second row button. The second row seats fold down and you get 103 cubic feet of storage. That's a lot. That's pickup truck size. Although the Lincoln Navigator may look like the size of an F-150, it's actually on an Expedition chassis and it's very similar, built on the same line, but it's not an F-150 chassis. It does have towing capability like we talked about. This is quite a bit of storage. You can get into a Lincoln Navigator around $78,000 full sticker. This is the black label with all the luxuries Everything is included and it starts at 99,000. Now this vehicle is 102,000. It has a few extra goodies in it. When you're looking at this vehicle versus a Range Rover or a Cadillac Escalade, you're all in that same price range. And then you also add in beyond the Lexus, you've got Audi and other brands. It starts to get very expensive. But for this segment of luxury full-size SUVs that have all the goodies, you're in a specific price point. Yes, you can go into Bentleys and that kind of product line, but it gets super expensive. This is a very specific product line. And for that, for value, the 2020 Lincoln Navigator earns a nine for value. If you're in the need for a luxury SUV, this is certainly one to consider, especially if you like the concierge part, which I think really helps improve the value of Lincoln and some of the other brands. The fact that you can call for service, they'll pick it up, give you something to drive, let you know when it's done, send you a text message, and the car is delivered, and it's all done at your home. This is the new way of concierge service. Not that you come in and they know who you are, which they would, but it's just nicer to have someone come to your home, make it convenient, come to your office. That's really what they're starting to get to at this point when it comes to some of these premium luxury vehicles. And with Lincoln, you add up all 10 categories, they've really stepped up the brand. Since Lincoln has made some major changes in their brand lineup, having the monochrome edition, having some of these premium features and concierge, they've got fantastic sales. You will see more and more of these vehicles on the road because they've really started to compete in this luxury category the way Lincoln was designed to be. For a total score of all 10 categories combined, the 2020 Lincoln Navigator Black Label earns a 93. If you bought a 2020 Lincoln Navigator, especially the black label, we want to know what you think. If you didn't buy the black label, why didn't you? Because you're kind of curious. I want you to put those comments down below and start the conversation. If I didn't answer any of the questions you might have about this vehicle, put it in the comments. I do answer them. If you bought something else, we'd like to know what it was that you bought and why you bought it. Was it the dealer? Was it the car? Because this is how we can help you have car smarts and improve your decisions so you don't have buyer's remorse. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and a share. And we appreciate your support on our Patreon page and following us on all forms of social media. Make sure to check out our website in English and in Spanish. We have even more content out there and we will look forward to seeing you next time.